Hey guys, my name is Eric. I've been doing graphic design and web development photography for over a decade now, and I want to share a few tips with you about raster and vector images, just so you have an idea, if you don't already, about the differences. So a little bit about InPursuit. We specialize in graphic tees and promotional products that you can put your brand on. We do everything from sunglasses you see here to water bottles and uh, plaques to coffee mugs. Really anything that you can put your logo on, we can do it. Uh, without uh, taking too much time to get into it, let's go ahead and talk about raster and vector. Now, raster, uh, we typically design in Photoshop and it's primary files that you'll find are JPEGs, TIFFs, and GIFs. Vector art, we typically design inside Adobe Illustrator. And the three main file formats that you'll find are .ai, which is the native Illustrator format, which we prefer, .eps, and PDF. Now, just because you see these different file formats doesn't necessarily mean that you are working with vector. But one of the things about raster is that it's made up of pixels. And as you'll see here, this R on the screen, standing for raster, it looks somewhat clear, but as you zoom in on it, you'll notice that the pixels start to show up. Now, all raster images uh, they are made up of pixels, as I just mentioned, and they start from left to right and then run top to bottom just as we read. So uh, no matter what, you're going to have the entire image full of tiny little pixels. Now, in contrast to that, vector art is made up of straight lines and curves. And so you can blow it up infinitely and not lose any of the detail. Let's take a look at a few live examples. On the left, we've got a raster image. So here's our In Pursuit logo. And I'm going to zoom in on this file and show you how badly uh, the pixels look whenever you actually zoom in. Now, the problem we run into is that people will go onto their website and grab their logo just right off of it, or they'll get it from their, the bottom of their email signature or wherever it is, or a Word document, and give it to us. And they're like, well, you know, the, my logo looks great when you're looking at it like this. And they don't understand why we have a hard time putting it onto a t-shirt at 12 inches wide. Well, it's because no matter what we do to it, if we blow it up and make it larger, zoom in, it's going to be pixely. So let me show you. I can go ahead and let's just do it 10 inches wide. And another thing is it needs to be at 300 DPI in order for it to uh, print properly. So the computer's going to think about it for a moment. Uh, Photoshop is having to do quite a bit of math here in the background. As you can see, it did a fairly good, no, just kidding. Um, so it's pretty gnarly looking. Now, it's really just because Photoshop has to guess what every one of these little pixels are doing and what they're supposed to be. So you can see we've got pixels ranging from stark white on the right all the way over to black. Now, considering the fact that this computer program just guessed what this is supposed to be, that's pretty impressive. Now, let's look at some vector art in Adobe Illustrator. No matter how far we zoom in, the image looks crisp. Now, another great thing about vector artwork is that it can be manipulated. For instance, we take this, we can curve the corners, uh, we can grab this little node here. Well, if I can actually do it, you know, we can bend it around, and that's because. All vector artwork is made up of simply straight lines and curves. As long as we know how to properly adjust those, we can change the art to fit our needs. AI files or vector files are definitely the preferred version for designers. 
at least for logo applications uh, that we primarily work with at In Pursuit Promotions. We would prefer whenever you're sending us art files that they're sent in this format. Now we understand that's not always the case and we can definitely utilize, say if you didn't have an AI file, you just had that small raster file, we could manually go in and redraw this. Uh, if you ever have anybody ask you, do you have another file format we can't use your JPEG, uh, the odds are it's too small. So I want to say thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you sticking around. I'll tell you real quick about a couple of our sites, or a few of them rather. We've got GoInPursuit.com, which is our, uh, our main site, and it is going to be where you're going to find promotional products. Uh, we've got a great search feature on there where you can search from tens of thousands of products. The next one, campstoregear.com. It is primarily focused on summer camps and uh, all the apparel and promotional products that you would want for summer camp. And we're building that out uh, and adding stuff to it daily. Uh, it's also got our blog on it and uh, you can find some great information. Lastly, we've got GetSpiritGear.com, and that is where you're going to find great product spirit gear for, well, your school. Uh, so if you are uh, part of a PTA or you're a teacher, a principal, etc., that's the place to go, and we specialize in uh, getting schools gear for their kids, and uh, we love doing that. One last and final thing. Don't forget to connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Twitter, we are kind of there. We're not real active, but uh, you can follow us there as well. Instagram is definitely our most active uh, location. So we would love to uh, connect with you there and, um, and see what you've got going on. Now, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and got anything out of it. I hope you did. And comment the comment section below if you have any questions. I'd love to answer them. And uh, if you have any promotional product needs, we would love to help you out with that as well. Thanks for watching, and we will talk to you on the next video.